Hello and welcome back to the channel. Thank you for joining me in another of my wonderful interviews. Today I want to revisit, and I know we've talked about this on the channel many times, the climate and net zero and all of that kind of stuff. Now it's not my ideas. Today I'm going to bring uh, somebody who knows a little bit more about it than I do. Um, and I want to talk to Ben Pyle. I have here written down he is the co-founder of climate debate he's also a together association cabinet member for net zero so if anyone knows anything or about the uh the the man-made global warming that we're all worried about it must be him ben welcome to the show thanks so much for having me richard uh, good to it, be here it's it's an absolute pleasure now th this is um a an area that touches all of us, especially as many of the policies that the government seem to be thrusting upon us, whether we like it or not, and we have no debate on it with them. Um, and we're having to pay the penalty with the ULES and the clean air zones and, and all of this nonsense. And a lot of people are very angry about it. And yet it doesn't seem to matter how many times you question the government or indeed the local councils about the policies they're pushing. They never seem to come up with any reasonable reason why they're doing it. So I'm very interested to hear your thoughts, seeing as this is your area of expertise. So where where should we start with um, climate debate? Where are where are we at? Well, the climate debate's never been had, and that's right. that's the, the 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 tragedy of it. Um, you know, as far back in the 90s, well, I was a green myself. I was a green, a bit of a lefty green. And uh, I didn't think then, like 1997 or 1998, I, you know, I, I thought the debate was over. And uh, so, well, it's kind of a, for, for a young man, that's incredibly arrogant. Where, where did you where? And, you know, I, it was it was the greens themselves that really put me off. Um, mm. you, uh, uh, their, their behavior I, I won't go into the the, the the events again but the the um well once you have your sort of interest peaked in about the yes. nature of of a claim or an argument or a debate or a movement um and you, and you and you find some wiggle room in there even if it's something you can believe if, you, if you've got cause to question it um mm. that can that can that can sort of lead to something quite catastrophic and i think that might be why greens get so very angry if you look at people like bjorn longborg um who's kind of kind of uh, I, I took a lot of inspiration from in fact um in in coming around from being quite a green um he he's a great big threat to the green movement because he's a lefty he's a liberal um he, he's a gr uh, vegan or vegetarian he's cycling you know he, he 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 lives he lives the lifestyle but he criticized uh global warming or climate politics um and and that makes him a, a, probably an even bigger enemy to to greens than the 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 likes of you know the oil the the oil uh the big oil conspiracies and so on um yes so um yeah so so the, the, we've never you know shortly after that or probably during that sort of time um the the entire political establishment was aligning itself to the green agenda of of course the public had probably quite different ideas um but uh, you, you know, rather than running any of these ideas past the public, um, we saw this transformation of the of, of, of politics in Britain, probably, and probably, uh, well, certainly across Europe, and and of course, probably globally as well, like this mm. consolidation of power, um, which very much requires whether it's at the UN or the European, you know, so a supranational organisation like the European Union, it requires these sort of existential crises. Um, as its own lifeblood. Um, so, you know, the idea of extending a choice or a debate to the British public was something of anathema to the ideology that was uh, consolidating at the time. And uh, so, 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 you know, there's a, a lot, a lot is hiding behind science, so-called science, um, yes. in the, in this debate. And so, you know, you, you sort of venture a, a criticism, doesn't matter how close to science or, or, or policy it is, it, 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 you know, you're just thrown out as a climate change denier. I mean, I've been in situations, uh, in discussions with civil servants or what have you, or, or just encountering civil servants. Um, and, and it's all they can do to stop themselves spitting at you. I mean, the, you know, the, the extent to which 
they have internalized this green ideology uh, is remarkable. And of course, that green ideology gets um, instantiated, um, made concrete in, in the institutions of the state or the intergovernmental agencies. Um, and that's all been happening apace while the public have been more and more and more excluded from mm. um, uh, from uh, uh, politics in general. I'm mean, not just about climate, you know, there's all sorts of yeah, no, absolutely. ideologies. And, but... and you're not allowed to, you, it seems you're just not allowed to criticise even small parts of it. That's right, yeah, yeah, to, to, to yeah, say, I don't like wind energy. I don't like solar panels. Well, you must be a climate change denier then, because the absolute necessity of addressing the the, the, the problem of climate change is, is, over, is overweening. It t right. takes precedence over any other kind of debate, and I, I remember yesterday. Yesterday, I think I was, I was trying to. Someone was trying to pick 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 holes in what I was saying, and all they could do is is throw to me charts of global temperature, which had nothing yeah. to do with the conversation that was happening. But it's right. kind of this sort of mentality that it creates among its sort of um, adherents, many of whom take it up, you know, on their own initiative. It, it would it would seem to me um certainly on twitter is they sort of spend their whole lives bombarding you people with with the same graph and it's obviously yes. very compelling to them but they don't when you say look this graph it's an article of faith to you we need to you need to step back a bit and you need to you need to be able to listen to to what's being put to you rather than um you know just this sort of recanting re, sorry recycling of the the litany um as it were um, you, 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 but, 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 but green, green ideolo ideology, it seems to me, precludes that. Um, so where were we? We were. Um, so, so the, so I mean, and it's, and it's not, and it's important for us not to get too bogged down in the science as well. So, so, so it's not just about is global warming happening? Is global warming causing climate change? We've got to um, understand that even if it is happening. There still needs to be a debate about whether and how that's coped with. If you if you want to accept those premises, and you, so there's 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 a constellation of claims. You know, there's like a, a sequence of uh, ideas which maybe we'll, we'll come on to mm. um, that can be interrogated on their own, um, a, apart from the fact of of uh, global warming. Well, I, 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 I mean, one of the things that seems to me is that, um, as you say, even if you say, OK, look, well, let's take it on board that there is a global warming situation. What is the real window of crisis? Because when you look back at history, every 12 years or so, somebody said, we've got 12 years, we've got 10 years, we've got <laughs> yeah. 20 years. You come to the end of that. The Maldives is still not underwater. The Thames hasn't sort of risen and, and Big Ben poking out the top. We and, and, and it's always pushed back. And you go, well, at some point we've got to come to some agreement that this crisis isn't quite as horrific as it is. And therefore, are the measures and the policies that you're thrusting upon us, which are very anti-human, Mm. at the moment, and we're being penalised by this very corporatized uh, government, are they right? And and do we have to do it in this very narrow window? Yeah, that's right. Well, I, I was put it to them, look, there's a, a, a very real risk. I mean, well, I, I don't think it's a risk. I think it's a, almost a certainty that climate change policy Will be worse than climate change. Any any plaus yes. any plausible degree of climate change. And people say, oh, well, you're going to feel sorry when it's six degrees warmer. And uh, yes. but it might be. And this is what that the, the, they can't can't really get their heads around. It might be even if it gets six degrees hotter and all this stuff happens, it might still be better to have a life with an abundant supply of cheap, affordable fossil fuels. Mm. And I'm not against alternatives, but they have to be economic. And we have to look at the historical picture to see how much worse our lives were uh, in the past um, to get an idea about, you know, why we use them, why we use energy in the way we do today. This is unleashing this energy has been very good for us. I mean, it's caused some it's caused us some problems, but you, you exchange third world problems for first world problems. And, and that 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 that's, of course, um, upsets greens because they have this sort of um, conception of the past 
in which is quite romantic um it's quite rational and and it sort of believes that th things were uncorrupt corrupted so sort of quite analogous to the sort of biblical stories of the fall and what and what have you um and you know once you once you start unpicking green ideology it's got nothing to do with climate change it's got nothing to do with the measurements of the temperature of the world mm. um they believe that there is a natural order to things which must be reflected in the design of human society um uh it, the the what what they believe is the sort of essence of the natural order so you got it's almost a cosmological order it's quite a mystical idea you know that kind of nature provides um sort of something analogous to sort of divine providence is nat natural providence and that there is there is a there is a way of looking at uh, nature um as a system um and that 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 system's got to re be reproduced in the design of uh of our our political order we've got to we've got to have the relationships right. between government and um and people in some way has to re re reflect the um relationships between a field and its population of insects and worms and 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 so on and so forth I, i'm not i'm not i'm not, so not not exaggerating here you know they've got a very systemic view and you know that back in the 60s i think they called it spaceship earth and right. the, the, so you know once you understood once you had a sort of grasp of the operating manual of spaceship earth you knew what your standing orders were um and then everyone everyone knew what their rations were and everyone knew what their place is so the, so it's kind of like the systematization of um uh of the, of the natural or the system natural systems you know the ecological yeah. order um uh it turns out to be it's not it's not an understanding of nature which emerges from science um it, it, it's it's a desire to systematize human life um, and every aspect of that, you know, regulating how, how many of you may they re regulating human fertility, regulating how much of anything you may use, re regulating right. what, what you may do. It's uh, an incredibly authoritarian, I mean, just to, to the maximum degree, um, authoritarian, wrapped but, in sort of lovely, green, fluffy, oh, look, we're all at one. With but if you, I mean, you, you said there that, that, that they think that nature provides. Well, it, it would provide more if you didn't lower your CO2 levels to the point where actually things can't grow because yeah, well, plants, possibly, you know, yeah, yeah. plants need the CO2. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, yeah, I, I think that's probably true. Um, there's some yeah, good evidence that sort of the, the, the earth has been greening um, and uh, we should we should sort of enjoy that we should we should uh, let's say that's that's probably a good thing you know that 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 leads to the possibility of greening deserts and and that leads to the possibility of um i mean we, we i mean they, they forget they forget all the good news and they write it out right and you know one of the one of the benefits of the last sort of few, few decades has been now um we, our footprint our physical footprint or at least the physical footprint of industrial agriculture has started to diminish um and you know you, you look e even in relatively highly densely populated places like india the, the 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 forest cover is growing india and china has got a quite remarkable reversal of of deforestation um and that and that's made possible um by um the the use of fertilizer the use of use of um uh, certain uh, uh, agricultural methods and not not all of them not all of them sort of a uh, uh, problem free um and i, I know you've, you've got you've had people on your show before who've sort of talked about the problems of industrial agriculture more more at the food end what's in the food mm. um so i'm not i'm not saying um you know everything's got to be gm and and full of chemicals i don't think that's the the best thing or even the the, the full full capturing of the food chain um is is a healthy development either uh, by corporations that is um is necessarily healthy e either like we, do, we don't need to we don't need to system you know we, we have a model of agriculture for example in the uk or we did till the relatively recent it's mostly family led not corporation led and yes you know, was, you know it's okay it's been more or less surviving for a very long time i think we we're, you know we, we we should do more to to sort of keep that maybe as it is rather than um, necessarily sort of let technology drive 
um, you know, the the inevitable march of progress got to sort of rip up all these sort of old old relationship working relationships uh, uh, between people and the land. I think that's, that's probably well. The connection between people and food is um, it has eroded so much that um, now, having spoken to farmers who who grow swathes of say barley or wheat or 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 cattle they think of them as a commodity rather than as food itself right, so that yeah. they've become so disconnected with the product that they're growing that they're not sitting down to eat roast beef from perhaps their own supply in a local restaurant mm. um, that that it goes off they don't know where it goes it goes via some distributor somewhere you know, your spring barley, it's going to be made into beer or, or lager or somewhere, or it's, it, it goes off into some big consolidate uh, situation. And, and that disconnect, of course, has followed on to the public who have, and, and children particularly at the moment, who have no connection at all with where that piece of chicken or even what the chicken looks like when it's actually squawking about pecking yeah. in, uh, in a run. And that seems to be, to me, very remiss because the the missing link between what we eat and where it comes from i think is in, is it very important that we retain that yeah i think that and that that's especially important now we're seeing farmers protests in europe or northwest europe uh, uh, anyhow um, in well germany and poland and and um poland now and um the netherlands more decisively so far um, I, I think the very interesting developments, but I think one, one of the obstacles to that here, for example, is people, people exactly that sort of um, decoupling of people's understanding about where food comes from. Um, you were just talking about, I, uh, so, you know, I, I, it, it, people, it's, it's quite difficult for farmers, I think, here to reach out in the right way, um, uh, n not to be too swayed by the green movement, um, but to sort of connect with the public more in the way that it has happened in Germany and elsewhere. Um, because, precisely because people, despite, we, we've got, you know, a lot of really quite aggressive legislation against farmers on the, on the, on the horizon coming, where they're probably feeling it already. Mm. Um, and and um, there's sort of no, it's been difficult to sort of create solidarity in a way because, uh, you, you know, in the face of, I think, I know he's American, but it, 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 it's, it's important anyway. Um, it's, it's the same, same stuff. John Kerry talking about the uh, abolition of farming, or even a lunatic like George Monbiot, but he, he's, he's not a policymaker. He's just a sort of um, guardian blowhard. But the, but the point is, um, uh, uh, people just think food comes from the supermarket. And yes. so when you say, oh, we're going to ban farming or we're going to restrict farming or whatever, they go, oh, that's fine, as long as I can... You know, yeah, I'll, still I'll get my tin of beans. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and and we'll we'll, we'll it, we will be the worst for it because we'll we'll, mm. we'll get more imports and then more of our land as well. I mean, they, they they talk a good game about rewilding and all that kind of stuff, but actually, a lot of our land is going to be given over to bioenergy crops, and that's just really, that's just dire. I mean, what, what right. this is just like kind of um, scars across the landscape. It's just producing the uglification of Britain. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, and this this speaks to the good news I was, you know, was trying to trying to talk about the um, it was it was coal that saved the trees, and it was oil that saved the whales, and it's been gas which has saved the land. You know, it's it, right. The these they, they they're not without again. You know, I'm 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 not I'm not sort of um, religious about this. The use of coal, oil, and gas is you've got to be careful, and it create, does create problems. But um, uh, by and large, again, they are the exchange of third world problems for first world problems, and you have to choose which 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 life is not problem free. That's the mm. green. That's the green myth. You know, that's like the story of that they still turned into Avatar, that silly film where everyone everyone lives in harmony. And there's even an ecological version of the internet. You have to sort of put your dreadlocks into a tree and then you can commune telepathically with in, in, in that story. You know, it's Fortunately, silly. I have not seen that film. <laughs> right. I mean, it's, uh, <laughs> apparently it's a real, one of the most popular films of all time. But um, Yes, I try and avoid a lot of these popular films. Very silly film. But that's, but that's, that's the story that's going... That's the yes. nature of ideology. That's what people come 
come come away from the cinema with these kind of ideas in their heads and no one countering it and that's how it festers or well, that's one mm. way that it festers so so, so um uh, yeah or the, the the good news the world is greening um fossil fuels actually allow us to reduce our impact on the natural world you know if you, if you look at how big a, a wind farm you would need to replace uh, uh, a, a coal-fired or a, a gas-fired power station it's enormous and, um, and nu nuclear power even more so i think the physical footprint of hinkley point c which is the one that's being built at immense expense but that's by the by it's about a, it's about a kilometer square um, you, you'd uh, you, and it does the job of several thousand wind turbines, um, right? But all the time, you know, mm. so you're not dependent on the weather. Um, so there's 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 all 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 of this good news and great stuff that that that, that we, we we should be celebrating, but we we can't because of the dominance of uh, of the green way of thinking about things and um, sort of probably interfering with a really good discussion about how. We should be farming, right? There's a lot, there's a lot of people. Uh, I mean, I follow sort of James Melville. He, I think, he's a farmer, and there's um, the Welsh guy. I've forgotten his called Gwyn, uh, um, Gareth Wynne Jones. Gareth Wynne Jones, yeah. And they've got some really interesting comments, and and sort of like kind of and um, 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 and they say, well, and you know, maybe we should be paying a little bit more for some of our stuff that's grown here, right? Maybe that, maybe that's you know, I'd quite happily pay less rent or mortgage or less for housing and pay more for food like that that seemed like all the money that we pay for housing is is just goes to banks anyway mm. um for no good reason um and and um and and maybe we could have a better conversation with farmers about how 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 we eat and what have you but um that get that that kind of proper conversation that that society should have um, you know, in a perfect, well, even not even in a perfect world, in just a slightly better world, um, a more democratic world, perhaps. Um, mm. That can't happen because everyone's going on about nitrogen pollution and CO2 pollution, and they're problematizing farming itself. They're yes. finding they're finding a problem with us feeding ourselves, which doesn't exist. We're getting better at it. We're reducing our physical footprint and we're reducing our chemical. Um, our chemical needs after a, a you know century of agricultural um, in, industrial agriculture. Um, so so yeah, I think it, it, environmentalism is this really toxic background noise that prevents these kind of conversations, um, prevents sort of us working in our own interests. So tell me about what you what you do then with climate debate, the the outfit that you're uh, mm -hmm. and your website that you've got, and and how you. Um, I guess educate people or try and push back against some of these policies. So we set Climate Debate UK up about a year ago, and that's organised mainly around a website um, at the moment. And I've got I've got the website. Let me just yeah. throw that up so people can have a um, a look. Hang on a minute. I'll just go back to the beginning of it. Here we go, so people can see where we are. And so at the top there, that's that's our introduction to the climate debate. That's how we see the world. Um, that's me and a couple of others. Um, um, and if you if you go into that, uh, so we've got. We, I mean, the the, the, the site is organised around all these categories. So the, one of one of the things that sort of was most bothered me about the climate change debate, which has not happened over the last sort of thirty years is this misconception of the climate debate as one between scientists and deniers on a single proposition, right? Climate change right. is happening, um, dot, 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 right? That's just false. Right. Um, that's not to say that climate change is not happening. But the point, the point is that there are a constellation of claims made in the climate debate. And there's uh, in, in each of those claims, there is a cascade of presuppositions um, behind them or, or, or above them, whatever, whatever you want to say. Um, and, and those can be understood in isolation. You can understand climate, global warming as a separate process to, to um, climate change. And, and what, so we've taken a very analytic approach to clim the, the climate debate in the round, is, you know, at large, yeah. as it were. So I mean, it's, it's interesting just, just scrolling here through your website and on all these little issues that 
Um, I mean, it is such a huge debate, isn't it? That, as you say, you've you've isolated all these different things from the things that be, that that can be thrown at us with the policies that um, everybody knows they're being approached. Everything comes back to oh, well, we're saving the planet, and yeah. and you know we're all going to be told that we've got to insulate our houses better, and there'll be fees and things like this, and the, we're all driving at twenty miles an hour and um it, it you know it it's becoming so absurd and yet th- these little individual things just seem to grow you know constantly yeah it's like they've taken half truths or less than half truths from every single thing and they go well on balance we're right and you're evil um uh, irredeemable deniers um, mm. but actually um if you if you go to the top and then we've got the schematic um, in this, this, this is so. This is our overview of the climate change debate. Um, you know, these, these, these are all things that can be debated on their own. And so, uh, global warming. We so we've divided sort of the claims that are made in the debate into about five. So this is one way of analysing the debate. You don't. It does. It's not necessarily the only way. Or you know, we want to create other sort of systemic views or analytical views of the of, of, of parts of the debate as well mm. but for example this one so this one this is just sort of a reflection it's actually an attempt to steel man as opposed to straw man the green argument and the and the green argument for sort of immediate and radical climate change mitigation policies um is constructed from these these five parts and on the left is the claim about anthropogenic global warming co2 emissions they produce some warming and there might be some very good evidence about that but there is a fundamental uh controversy here and that's the role of negative and positive feedbacks which i won't go into too much detail about but uh, science doesn't act like kind of just just the global warming on its own right just mm. the amount of warming you would expect according to global warming science from the amount of emissions we have produced or are going to produce um, don't produce a radical amount of warming the radical warming comes from um, feedback processes so you get warming causes some degree of climate change and different types of climate uh, different aspects of climate change and this produces more warming so you sort of get this sort of um, in the past they used to call it the runaway greenhouse effect but it was it was just a sort of um a scaremongering hypothesis and now sort of scientists are withdrawing well very much pretty much the even the sort of you know the, the the alarmist consensus essentially has withdrawn from that and then you know that there there isn't so the, 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 there isn't um much to be certain of to drive the rest of the debate um so the second category is climate change. So, so sort of some some degree of global warming we you could sort of anticipate will cause certain climatic changes. Like there might be more moisture in the atmosphere because warmer air is capable of holding more moisture, and then therefore right. when when it rains, it might rain with more with more force. Um, but many of these claims just sort of don't turn out to be true. So we don't see more hurricanes. We don't see more hurricane energy. Um, in the world, um, so we don't see any f- increased frequency or intensity of storms, um, and we, we, you know, we don't we don't actually see much more more floods or, or, or drought right. or wildfires. But then, um, le- but leaving the detail aside, um, this sort of conventional wisdom, conventional green wisdom, has it that these climate changes will cause climate impacts of various different kinds. Right. Um, and and um, uh, I can't actually see them at the moment. But the, uh, the oh right. The, so the, then you <laughs> so you've got you've got deforestation. Right. You've got ecosystems. You've yeah. got. Um, so uh, I can't read that one. And it, yeah, yeah species, uh, species extinction, right. flooding, seawater rises, yeah, so, and, and so wildfires. Uh, fl- flooding, flooding is a good one, for example. So, um, fl- you know, the IPCC finds no evidence of increased flooding at the global scale, and and um, in fact, you know, and that that's quite reasonable. That's you should expect that to happen. Right. Um, firstly, because if you the, the in fact, if you want to find evidence of global warming and climate or certainly climate change 
um, you're probably going to have to wait about, well, between uh, some number of centuries because the effects, the effects that sort of concern, concern people are actually really quite rare. Extreme weather events, even, I mean, if, if you think like when, when you, um, the, the flood, floods, for example, are a product of society's interaction with the environment. I mean, you know, nobody cares if a flood that nobody lives on, sorry, if right. fields that nobody lives on floods, right? You only, you only care about a flood if it swallows up your house. Yes, and 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 um, Britain's landscape is almost entirely engineered, um, even where it looks very pretty and yes. um, natural. It, we don't it, have wild, you know, just limitless wild areas that it doesn't, you know, things. Yes, I mean, right. even the even the floodplains have been built on. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, um, Britain's. I've lived in about three ancient. British cities that are floodplains, Oxford, York, London, they are, they are all floodplains. I mean, there's no, there's no mistaking them. I mean, I'm, I've been sitting by the river in York. In fact, it was a party on an island. Well, it's not an island. Well, it, it wasn't an island when I got there, but it was an island when I tried to leave. Right. And it was a, it was a balmy autumn evening. But up on the moors, it had been raining, raining um, yes. cats and dogs. And this pushes the level of the ooze up, you know, a good 20, 30 feet. And, and the water's and coming down water. from the hills. We're like, oh gosh, now now we have to put some waders on to to escape from from where, where, we, where yeah. we were. Luckily, it was a, it was a sort of a, a, people had that sort of stuff. They had boats. It was, it was a, well, I suppose if you live in that sort of area, you're used to the various um, vagrancies of the of the weather and what's what's likely to happen. I mean, yeah. we're a very adaptive type of um, creature, the humans. Uh, yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, and, or, or, I mean, fortunately, it was, and it was. Uh, well, I mean, for and, and it's got to the point where actually now, the, the certainly the people around around where the boats were, um, almost it sort of moving back into nature or closer proximity to nature is a lifestyle choice. It's a very enjoyable sort of way to to live on, you know, mm. rather than in a residential street. Anyway, so 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 um, fl floods floods. I take the view that there's no such thing as a, a natural disaster uh, because we we have the means to prevent floods, uh, no matter what Green say. It's not they're not they're not me a flood is not a meteorological phenomenon. It's 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 a phenomenon caused by um, a, a policy failure and engineering failure. And people think I'm overstating that sometimes. But there's a great photo on the on I, I've seen knocking around a few times. There's a flood on one of Westminster's bridges or one of London's bridges. It's not because the water, the rivers come up. It's because the, the, the daft mayor and his daft underlings hasn't accommodated uh, hasn't accommodated for the water to go anywhere and he's right. built he's built one of his silly cycle lanes um with these with these sort of um uh, barriers that prevent the exit of water over the over the bridge right it's just an end right simple. so that it can escape yeah yeah so 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 there's this bridge without that much you know a, a good half a foot foot of water um on the top of it like a like an aqueduct Right. Um, and, uh, and 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 the same is true of like some of the most catastrophic events that we, we that sort of rocked the news in the last few decades. There, the, I think a, a, a few a hundred or so people killed in Germany a few years ago. That was predicted um, by by analysts before it happened, and warnings were made to agencies, mm. and agencies were just deaf to those warnings. Um, and that and that. You know the policymakers just didn't take them seriously. Um, the same happened in Katrina, uh, the, the Hurricane Katrina, I think about twenty years ago, uh, that inundated New Orleans. That was the result of political negligence um, and and the failure to br uh, maintain the levees and um, infrastructure that protects New Orleans, which most of which is under under sea level um, from, right. from from storm surges and same so like the people who've mastered this if you if you look at uh, uh, the, the history of Holland the the, the Netherlands um, 
They know what they're doing. They know what they do, and they knew it a yeah. really long time ago. It's I think it's like the 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 thirteenth maybe uh, century or so. They've well, been, when you think we 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 drained the fens and places like that, and we brought the Dutch, the Dutch over, yeah. 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 I mean, at, at the end of the day, it seems to me certainly in this country, as you say, these this failing of policy. We seem to have money for wars, yeah, left, right, and centre. But when it comes to shoring up rivers and stopping what we know are going to be flashpoints, and we've we've got a vague idea of what the weather does on a regular basis, and and we know where the we ought to know where the water is likely to go, That's right. and yet we can fund the uh, the the death of millions yeah. across the other side of the world, but we can't do this for our own people. I mean, it is as you say, it's it's a failure of of policy. That's right. I do, and I, I, I take great heart from the fact that now, when the floods happened this last few weeks, people have just been putting up on Twitter pictures of their local, of the, of the drains on their street. And they're saying this, I don't remember this gully having been cleaned since um, mm. the 1980s. And rivers you know, and, dredged properly. R- that's right. Yeah, and r- rivers silted up as well. And yeah. Kind of this, this, and that, and, and much of that is actually the result of green ideology. You know, it's like kind of the the the, the European Union um, did t- took a turn against um, dredging rivers. <laughs> Excuse me, um, because they believed it it lowered the the quality of water, and the, the water quality target was more important than the flood defence target. So it, 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 all of this baffles me. In in I mean, I keep coming back to the one point in my shows is here we are in the 21st century at supposedly the state of the art of of us as a as a human existence with the technology that we have available the knowledge and everything else and yet everything is a shambles yeah i mean yeah. every you know everything is is falling to bits the police the national the health service the borders everything we can't even shore up the rivers yeah and you and and it's not because we can't is that the government and the agencies that work for the government are told not to through some ideological policy it's a, it's a, you, you put your finger on it it's and it's quite i think it's quite amazing that um yeah the more the more the more sort of incompetent an agency is the more it will sort of experience um, or, or try to sort of uh, champion climate change. I, I think I've made this point before as well. Um, the more crisis ridden an institution is, the more it will sort of experience or try to project that crisis as a fact of the external to itself of the world. Mm. And that's true. You see that. I think that's what the green agenda really, really speaks to the, the, the if you look at any institution from the monarchy, the church, um, uh, 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 the, the banks, uh, the, the financial regulators, um, the, the, the more the more existential crisis they are in, the more they will tell us. You've got to, you've got to mend your ways, not 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 address yes. their own. It's but do you, so, so that's interesting. Do you think that I mean, it comes it, to me, it seems that actually if you gave those people in the various towns whose drains are blocked and the rivers are not the tools and the money to get on with it, they'd do a far better job Absolutely. because they they've got vested interest in it because their houses are the ones that are likely to be flooded they'd organize themselves it might take a bit of time initially but they would organize themselves to shore up those rivers to clean those drains and if they had the right tools they've got the motivation whereas it's lost in these big quangos and these environment agencies who it's it's all lip service that's that right they... yeah and I, I well that, that's kind of the principle that local authorities sort of were seemingly founded under right the 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 uh, local a uh, local government uh, you know my kent county council or thanet council thanet district council whatever it is um they are they are here and they they're sort of got these responsibilities um that they discharge based on our consent and our engagement with with uh, with, with, with the democratic process um, but well, and this is this. I mean, so the work we've been doing with together, I, we're steering away from the um, the schematic. But I'll, I'll, maybe we'll come back to that. But the the, mm-hmm. the the work we've been just just done is to look at the 
influence of a number of fake civil society organizations on local authorities and the problem so the problem the problem has been with local democracy so called um is that people have just people just don't turn up so you get sometimes you get you get turnouts that just make you weep like 12% or something mm. in some places and, and no one no one's voting so you, you can imagine that uh, a local councillor has, has has won his position um on on maybe three percent of the vote or something just out just outrageous but are people um, just not and, turning out because they just feel disenfranchised that it doesn't make any difference yeah, anymore I, these these are so large things that th- they'll, they're, they're so depowered Yes. That, that, you know, and and that's something surely that has got to come back. I, I hope so, and that's what I think. That's one of the main aims is together of together is to sort of energise that. Um, but uh, the um, but the but, but the the disengage yeah the disengagement is is insidious and and kind of it serves it serves the the blob if you like for this to be the state of democracy for very few yes. people to take part in it. And um, and then and and then they can treat the their victories as as a, a coronation rather than an election because like well, you're not gonna no one no one voting is voting for for, for 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 that to be changed and so we we've been looking at kind of the organisations that have set themselves up um, to sort of lobby and pressure local governments into taking green policies in particular net zero but that gets framed as 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 um, uh, anti pollution, anti air pollution, so it's sort of the the anti car stuff. Mm. I'm leaving aside the science of it. The the um, the, the, the there there is a sort of an attempt to form networks. They love the they love the word network, network of local authorities, local councillors and mayors. Um, so look at two or three organisations that sort of. That bring them all together to try and help them enforce net zero, right? Um, and they they just surround and overwhelm. They, they, and, they, and they've got the resources of of global um, NGOs, but they're mm. but they're push, pushing them at, at local places. So this this is the sort of genesis of stuff like um, Oxford's experiment with fifteen minute cities. Uh, controversial terminology, but um, that that's that that's what they said in their own plans. Uh, Fifteen minute cities and and LTNs are, are part of that, um, mm. and LTNs and and clean air zones and U- ULEs in in London. Um, these aren't being driven by um, you know uh, millions of people turning out of the battle ballot box making decisions about what they want. They're being made by organizations that try to forge illegitimate cross-party consensuses even at the local and national levels so that the public has no real choice no real say mm. there's nothing there's nowhere to put an x that, that sort of reflects their views on these things even if those candidates have said to the public this is what we want to do with 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 your mandate so so they they um um surround these local councils as they you know pump all these resources into into sort of lobbying them um and and nobody really notices until it's too late until the the anpr cameras go up and Mm. and people start getting um 100 pound fines in their letterbox and then unable to do all the things that they did before um either for themselves or for the community or for the for their neighbours, so you know the 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 extent. I mean, people people say, "Oh, you just want to drive your car wherever you want, where you know, take your unnecessary journeys." But actually, um, a, a hell of a lot of private car use is informal social care. You know, it's looking after great aunt Jane who who needs to be taken to bingo or shopping or the hospital appointments, um, and and so you know, people aren't. Um, People aren't using their cars for for, for giggles. They're, mm. they're they're they you know they 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 fulfil a, a huge number of functions for 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 people, um, and you get these kind of very in in local authorities you get these very driven, often quite young um, and very stupid people who sort of take these kind of projects on. Um, often funded by the same organisations, 
um and 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 you know they're just this stuff you know this idea that anyone in the local community might want to object to these um these sort of uh, changing society changing projects it's just anathema to them they've never considered the possibility that anyone mm. could could refuse well, they're doing it for everybody's good aren't they it's, yeah, we're doing, it's yeah. for the good of the yeah. planet it's for the good of everybody else and if it's a little bit upsetting for you well you know you're 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 not thinking of everybody else yeah and you'll you'll find another way of doing it you'll find another another way of um of managing your life push your granny in a in a in a wheelchair in the pouring rain or in the snow that's yeah, you know yeah. the the three miles you've got to go so that she can have a little bit of comfort with some friends yeah. you know great thanks yeah. but this is our opportunity as well because people have had their eyes open to the nature right. of how politics has been corrupted in the uk and elsewhere. So, 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 yes, yeah, so let's let's talk about that because I, I do try to find solutions on this, and and you know it's very easy to look at the problem and then think it's all down. Let's. What can you tell us then about the fact that a people are waking up to it? They're they're getting these hundred pound fines for driving their car. I mean, I've had it happen to me. I've had bailiffs at the door, you know, and you go, hang on a minute, I, I didn't even know this thing existed. I never saw the signs and what have you. Now we want to take your van away. So people are sort of feeling the pressure and saying this is very anti-human now. This is actually not for my benefit. Thank you very much. And I'm not really sure that we're saving the planet because these islands you said 20 years ago are supposed to be underwater. That hasn't happened. How do we... Where is, where's the positive, Ben? So, so I mean, if you, if you live in a place that's got a 12% turnout, the, the alternative is incredibly simple. And you, you've just got to get people out to turn out to turn out, not and not turn out for for the for the legacy parties. Right. You've got You've got like let let we we need to get rid of them. I think and and that's that's what the last few decades have really been screaming at for me. And um, the the cro the cross party consensuses that have been developed exist in order to prevent a democratic debate about anything at all doesn't matter whether you believe in climate change or not mm. um you, you might you might share greta's views um you, you, if you can't vote against a thing you haven't voted for a thing right right you know you there needs to be the choice and it needs to be a meaningful choice but so at the local level you can really send the wind up these this cross-party consensus by organizing just dozens of people and um the, the problem that we have is that level of finding that level of motivation um, before. So, so either we do it before it becomes an it becomes a motivating factor in it, in and of itself, or, 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 or we do it now. We, you know, we, we're anticipating how much worse things can get. And um, so I, I would suggest like you know, it's going to happen. Right. People mm. are going to be made very angry by the full rollout of net zero and most of that net zero agenda is going to come through the lo through local authorities and the reason for that is no government is going to survive net zero fully like like being identified with the full implementation of right. net zero and in fact climate politics has stalled at the global level it's been stalled since the paris agreement you know it's a the 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 process that produced the paris agreement was an attempt to uh, find a one size fits all for the whole planet it failed for every country so now what happens is every country gets to write its own nationally determined contributions so everyone sets their own climate targets um and then you know the, so you get these language in the uk when 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 a policy doesn't go the green way or looks like it may not go the green way uh policy debate that is um green say oh but what about our international commitments you could have you could have we, we could have tomorrow our target for co2 emissions by 2050 and we'd right. still be within the paris framework we'd yes. say oh we're changing our nationally determined contribution so it's it's kind of a, a fudge and a lie that you know that that that, that politicians used to say um, we we need to do this stuff anyway. So it's it's failed on the global stage. 
it's failed on the on the national st stage because uh, governments don't really have any idea about how to do it. So they're pushing more and more of the emphasis onto local authorities, and that's that's why we get air pollution now taking the place of climate change in the sort of green narrative um, at, at the local level. So we're going to ban cars. It's actually about climate change. All all of the sort of stories about climate change have just been edited in and 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 air pollution has been put in their place it's based right. on just a shonky science and it's just as dodgy politics but anyway what what's emerged since the ltms and the air pollution policies um and and, and what's on the cards um such as for example local authorities refusing planning consent um for people who do not sort of put a uh, replace their gas boiler with a heat pump, right? This, this, this is the nature of what's going to be asserted through mm. the local authority. This has really upset people, and now they're organising, and and they're they're hot they're hot on the heels of the the, the legacy parties, and um, they they they're going to, where there is a mobilised population um, who have recognised that the problem is this cross party consensus. They are motivated to challenge them in elections and i think they will win but the yes yeah, and, and the arithmetic is in our favor we've got them they've got all the money they've got the mm. billions and billions and billions but we've got the millions of people and it's and, it, and it's people people that count it's, it's mm. x's in boxes that counts in those processes so if you you know if if you've got a if you've got a turnout of 12 percent the the arithmetic you, you're just going to walk it if it's higher but rem like kind of even even mid 40 percent turnouts in local authority elections is really high in the uk so you don't have to it's it's not it's not like changing a national election it's not like entering and dominating westminster this is very easy for people um, to to do, but we're people get so preoccupied with Westminster, they forget mm. their own local thing. And you can bet that if 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 the uh, if you know the the election maps at the end of the day stop being red, uh, blue, yellow, or or green, and start being independent colours, um, then that will re be reflected in a change of national policy, and it will will up, will, will will change the debate in Westminster. And, be a very clear signal that the the net zero agenda is not wanted but it but it is that first motivation it's yes. very difficult to get people mo motivated to do anything and you, 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 i was going to say you don't want them to get to a point where people are are angry and start using violence that's right Absolutely. because then you know you the government then has a duty to come down heavy-handed and Absolutely. on the basis of oh we've got to quell this martial law and all of this sort of stuff so it is as you said before you've got to start doing it now before it gets too extreme because otherwise you know you'll be dancing on eggshells oh, yeah well, we don't want to do it in on... anger doing it in anger is the worst possible yes. way you've got to do it, anticipate the problem yes. I, I get a lot a lot of people sort of challenge me on some of those points and say well there's no one to vote for it's like well okay there's your opportunity. There's your responsibility. I mean, it, 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 maybe maybe it's a problem that's created by that attitude in a way that you want to be able to choose where to put your ex, but you're not necessarily willing to organize a bunch of people to meet up in the pub, have a mm. drink and talk about who would make a good candidate and what kind of platform you want. But that's what it takes. That's how it was constituted in the past. People right. say, "I'm not taking. I'm not. You know, I'm not standing for this. This needs to change. We're going to organise, and we're going. Um, you know, I think. I think even in the past, um, party um, affiliation was not put on a ballot box at local elections. You you stood candidates. Candidates may be part of a party, part of the Labour Party, maybe a Labour Party." Um, that or the local branch of the Labour Party, for example, that selected those candidates through that process, but the 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 the, the name the, the name of the party was irrelevant. It was the candidates that, that right. stood for something. And there's this wonderful film um, from the 1960s called Heckle. 
having heckle heckling um, black and white film and it shows the level of engagement that used to exist in local yes. politics and and the the mp i think may, may be mainly focused around mps the film but but the guys turned up uh, to these packed you know the, the candidates turn up to these packed town halls and they're all getting earfuls from the public they're totally unruly yes but all of the candidates it's a fascinating show if you can find it all of the candidates are, are, are there with the full expectation of being confronted by a hostile room full of people and making their pitches and responding to the heckling sometimes people go got got thrown out and what have you but there was a very there was a lively dynamic to 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 democratic politics in the uk in the past and Brit that was britain's character i think much more like kind of uh uh that kind of um uh, indifference to right to to, polit uh, to to class to to you know to to big knobs turning up here telling us what to do when we know better than them what to do you know this was this was the sort of the the, the prevailing attitude but, but people people accepted the 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 um the, the compromises that are necessary for democracy to function um i'm probably going way off the point now but the no the, the, but you, I, I think you're right and and one of the things that i've noticed is that in the past we had newspapers local newspapers local radio stations we used to talk about things in our locality so that we had places to sort of understand moan groan grumble and and actually you know do stuff but we've we've now we sort of look at wider pictures the the, the country in general or in fact we get so involved with things overseas that we've got no actual beef with ourselves other than we're worrying about what's going on that we've forgotten what happens here you know and suddenly you get that ugly building or you get that lovely park bulldozed and grown on and you just well when did that happen? who agreed on that it's just happening yeah. and we've we've become again we've and i think that's intentional um that we've become less involved in our environment and defranchised from it all so that it becomes very difficult and i've sung this out on on my show about we should be back in the parish rooms in the in the meeting uh, halls the local village hall on the beach in the parks wherever talking um again about our locality and the things that we want and challenging the government the councils and saying hold on a second we're the people of this community and we don't want this or or we do want this absolutely absolutely yeah it's got it, maybe maybe it can be recaptured but maybe 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 it's the pressures of contemporary life i mean back in the um i, th I think there was a george galloway podcast he makes the point i'm not not, not someone i'd sort of um send postcards to or anything but george galloway he makes he makes this great point and he, he was raised in um by his um in a, you know his dad i think is a draft was a draftsman and so he his 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 family was brought up on one income um on a working class income right and uh that's not possible in today's world in today's britain you, you the the uh uh, but I think that's a really, really vital point. Like how, how, but you know, it's great that women are in the workforce, and 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 it, 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 that that's all for the for the the great the greater good. Like kind of people aren't forced into sort of particular um, lifestyles or family relationships or what have you. But 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 it's not great that to to have a family requires two full time incomes. Unless you're on benefits, that's a bad thing. Yeah, like and, and again, a... I come back to this point. Here we are, the state of the art as we should be as, as sophisticated, cultivated people. And yet somehow it's all gone wrong that we've forced our uh, two parents out mm -hmm. to work. The kids are in in school and doing all these homework clubs. They're barely with their family. They've got uh, no ad advice from their parents and upbringing now. The, yeah. the internet is, is their parent in many situations. And we've allowed this to happen. And, and then you look back to those 1950s days where the technology wasn't as advanced, but one person went out to work, the other was at home. I'm not arguing whether that's good, bad or indifferent. Mm -hmm. It's just that one wage 
kept the family. Yeah. And and now everybody seems to be running in order to stay still. And it, and it, 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 we were promised, I mean, I don't know whether you're old enough to remember Tomorrow's World. Yeah, I remember. And all the time you know, in the 1970s, you'd watch this and they kept telling us how much leisure time we would all have and how marvellous it was all going to be. And it's turned out that actually, although we have laptops and phones, we're now contactable, contactable 24-7. We're expected to work on the train to work on our laptops, answering emails. We're working harder and, and you know, more than hours than any other time. Sundays, people are, are working. All of that seems to have gone. And you think, where, where? has it gone wrong? Where, where, where's the money gone? Like, yeah, yeah. I, I'm the, the one that strikes me. I mean, there are all sorts of things about the post office scandal, which I think sort of resonate with that. But the but the, the, the banks are closing at the moment, this rate of knots and, you know, banks closing left, right. How is it possible for there to, I mean, I grew up on a, on a, on a, off, off a relatively busy main road on which I think there were two or three banks, maybe two banks and a building society. Right. They're all gone now. Yeah. And now there's one in town. I walked past it the other day and I, 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 they clearly want to close it. But you, you know, you were never very far. If you were in a, if any kind of town, you were never far from some bank or another. And how the was, post office, yeah. And the, and the post office. And so, how is it possible that when GDP was a fraction of what it was now, there were multiples of the number of banks and post office branches that there are now? Mm. So, like we, we, we're in theory, however many times richer, yet we we don't have and uh, uh, we don't have. All these facilities that we used to have, we don't have these sort of parts of the the, 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 fun, the parts of, that were necessary for the functioning of society. Now, of course, you don't need to have a bank if you can do online banking and so on and so forth. But um, uh, why why are you know why are the banks closing? Well, there's still people people still want to use them, and maybe mm. they want to use them in in less volume. But why why is there this this sort of collapse of banks and and also the, the the nature of the relationship between people and and banks has clearly changed as nigel farage has, has shown us but the um um yeah, yeah we, we 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 don't seem to despite all this extra wealth it all seems to go into battle to the banks <laughs> um well it does and, and so much of this is policy driven by things like the green agenda the net zero and, and we ever more seem to be going downhill with having to pay out for things which actually when you look into it it seems to be either a big myth or has been exaggerated to the point that somebody's making money from it and it ain't mm. you and me mm. um Ben, we've been chatting for an hour now, and oh. I usually just do it. I know it's amazing, isn't it? Talk around these things. Where can people find out more information about what you're doing? I've obviously, your website here, which is climatedebate.co.uk. That's right, yeah. Um, and we didn't get to finish that graph. Never mind, next time. People people the, can people, people can explore can it. Look, yeah, absolutely. Do, uh, there's, a, there's, there's an intro uh, uh, on, on there, a video intro where I explain it. Um, there, uh, I'm on Twitter. I'm C, uh, Climate Resistance, C L M, uh, let, uh, number eight, Resistance. Um, and You've got a YouTube channel as well, I note. Got a YouTube channel. You should get most of the videos through the website. Click on videos right. and then you can you know, follow it the normal way. Um, and there's a, I've got a Substack, Net Zero Scandal dot substack dot com, where, I mean, that's a subscription thing, but that's how right. I support. All the links are on the web page. Uh, they may not yet be. <laughs> oh, okay. I was. It's, we're we're a small outfit, and yeah. uh, we want to grow, and um, we want to draw people. But but um, yeah, I set the sub stack up, and then I haven't updated the website, and then I, I've got to write the articles, and it's it's. it's oh, a, I know what it's, it's like. It's blooming <laughs> hard work, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, yeah. there's, there's not enough hours in the day, and and actually, at the end of the day, we still want to have a bit of a life as well. As well. Um, well, no, that'd be you know, because nice. that's why we're here. Isn't it? <laughs> but Ben, thank you so much for coming on the show, talking about the the green agenda, um, the net zero, and and where we are with the climate debate and all the things. And uh, your central message there seemed to be that we need, as people, we need to get engaged again in our local towns and councils, and and challenge and and maybe stand uh, up and be voted and counted. And, and engage before it's too late. 
That's that's absolutely right. That's exactly what we want to do. Um, and hopefully, we can help them with some of the arguments. But I think most people are capable of finding out what they need to to know once their interest is is um, aroused, as it were. I think people people um, people are capable of far more than these bossy, yes. outmoded institutions. Um, absolutely, that's absolutely brilliant, Ben. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thanks for having um, me. It has been wonderful. And uh, I hope the audience, you've enjoyed the conversation. There are going to be plenty more on the channel. So do join me again. So in the meantime, thank you for watching. And from Ben and myself, we hope you have a good day. Until next Bye. time, goodbye.